Hi, you guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. So today it's just going to be a chatty get ready with me while I address all of your assumptions about me. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then keep on watching. But before we go, like we always say, comment, like, subscribe. Ding! Let's get to it. So today, y'all get me like Mr. Cheeks got Renee because a girl had to go out for a jog and I was not about to wash my hair. You already know. So, I will have everything I'm using in the description box, but I'm just gonna address all these assumptions as I do my makeup. And we will go from there. So I am using the Hourglass Mineral Veil. If I don't mention it, because I'm in the middle of talking, then it will be in the description box, just so you know. Look how white that made me, but it just works so good. So let's start by addressing the first one. And it was submitted to me by Ruby. And I'll pop the assumptions up somewhere as I go. Her assumption of me is that I'm tall. You guys, that is far from the truth. I am a whopping 5'2". I used to say I was 5'4", but I got called out a lot for my lie. But only my close friends because anybody that was not a close friend would never see me without heels on. So one day, I decided I was gonna ask my doctor to measure me since I kept being called out on being 5'4". And yeah, 5'2". I'm pretty sure we have, um, us short people have all lied about our height at one point or another. Now, I just don't care. I just say great things come in small packages. I'm just spot concealing because my hyperpigmentation is doing so much better and going away um, with my new skincare routine, but I am pretty sure the foundation may not cover it all, so I always spot conceal. It's just me. So yeah, Ruby, 5'2", if you must know. Oh, I just dug my nail in that. And I'm pretty sure you guys are probably like seeing my Instagram and saying, how in the world is she 5'2"? Angles, honey, angles. Work your angles. I always go like this, always. It gives me a longer look. And um, if you didn't see my Instagram the other day, I met up with, um, you guys know her, it's Jennifer or Ashley, but I met up with the YouTuber, Ashley Willard. And I made the assumption, again, and I hate the word assume, but I did make the assumption that she was my height, give or take. Yeah, she wasn't. She was 5'10", y'all. 5'10". Like, I can't imagine Maybe because I'm short, but seeing the world in 5'10", like, I think that must be cool. You see something from, I don't know. Maybe is it a short people thing that we think like that? Or, like, I barely have, I have a hard time seeing over the dashboard in my car. Like, I have my car set up to where as soon as I sit in and I press that it's me in the car, like I press the button for it to recognize my seating, like my seat goes all the way up. 
So there you go, Ruby. No, I am not tall. I am only 5'2". So talking about my car, let's move on to Lori's assumption of me. One of, Lori submitted a few. One of the few, and that was that I drive a fancy car. Now everybody's perception of fancy is different. Honestly, my perception of fancy and my dream car is a 1955 Chevy Bel Air, red and white, with silver trimming and white leather interior. That is fancy. In my opinion, that's just me. I love an old car, I love auto mechanics, um, thanks to my dad. But I'm not sure what you consider fancy. If I didn't have kids, I'd probably drive a convertible honestly um but i currently drive a cadillac srx i don't know is it a 14 a 15 i don't know but it's almost paid off and she gonna we gonna ride her till the wheels fall off because i don't want a car payment i'm not about that life and prior to that, I had a the same car, but a 2010. And the only reason I got a new one was because I got a job closer to home. At the time that I had my 2010, I was driving 62 miles one way to go to work and come home. So that poor car got a beating and I didn't mind the drive but once i got a job closer to home i knew she had to go because i just put a beating on her so yes i drive a cadillac srx and it's primarily one i'm a chevy girl i love chevys and cadillac is just in a fancy chevy but also like the steel reinforcement of the doors and just the security of the car. And this is the car that I drive my kids around in. So it was funny cause when, I don't know if you guys remember, it will definitely depend on a few things. Your age and um, your preference and genre and music. But when I saw that, um, Get that clump I just got that assumption I'm not sure if you guys remember the video I could like specifically remember the video in my head of the guy sitting on the front of his Cadillac but not like leaning on it kind of leaning on it on the hood and it's like he sung nasally from in here <laughs> and he was like do you want to ride in the back seat of my caddy top it up but do it die yeah, that's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's see. Sean Cherie made an assumption that I love spicy food. That assumption is correct. I love spicy food. And the biggest struggle for me has been I got my um, gallbladder removed in, um, in May. It was Mother's Day weekend. So, and it was like an emergency situation. So it's like, I didn't even have time to adjust to the fact that I wasn't going to have one. And I needed to adjust to a new diet. Let me tell y'all. I'm not gonna give up spicy foods for the lack of a gallbladder. I'm just not gonna do it. I'll make sure I'm in the vicinity of a restroom I feel comfortable using. And that's the God's honest truth. But to give up spicy food, mm, no thanks. 
like Thai hot. Oh, I love Thai hot. Just because it's like burning hot, but it doesn't linger. So you eat it, it goes away. You eat it, it goes away, and then it goes away before you even take the next bite. So you can appreciate it. But like, I wouldn't enjoy like a lingering heat. That's just me. In that same assumption, um, Sean put that I'm a strict parent. So, uh, I'm strict with certain things. So, I'm strict with education. I'm strict with grades, doing what you gotta do. Um, you don't have a job. Like, that's all you have to do. And I fully expect for you to give 110% in that. Um, I'm strict with their routine, their schedules, um, what they eat. My kids are allowed soda, maybe. Oh my God, I want to say definitely once a year. But if I let them twice or three times, if, if I let them anything more than once, like it, it's an extenuating circumstance. It's a party. There really isn't much else. Um, I'm trying to think. That's pretty much it. You know, I don't, they don't do it. And then because I don't let them have sodas or things, sugary things, when they do, honey, run. Because it's going down with the energy that you're going to get out of them. I'm strict with things like that. Respect. Um, respect. But I also am not a big believer and I may get backlash for it but I'm not a big believer in you respect someone just because they're older yes you respect your elders but you if someone is not treating you with the respect that you deserve I don't care how old my kids are like you don't let anybody disrespect you and I mean blank nasty disrespect and the fact that my kids are mixed um their struggles are a little different than most and i definitely don't let anybody call them outside of their name their race um, there's just certain things that I will never tolerate. I don't care who you are. Um, so things like that. But at the same time, I'm a strong believer of you can't be too strict with kids. Like kids aren't born knowing that something is wrong or the right way or the wrong way. Like if something is done wrong or said inappropriately, I'm going to take a step back. I'm gonna get down eye to eye. We need to have a conversation. I need you to know why this was not okay. I need you to verbalize it back that you understand and what it is you understand, not just, yes ma'am, I understand. No, I need to know what is it that you understand. Um, things like that. And then if it persists, um, then yeah, we may have a problem. But like I said, kids just aren't born knowing. They have to be taught. Um, I don't tolerate any disrespect in the school. Um, I had it once with my daughter when she was in kindergarten where like I was with my daughter getting, I don't remember if it was breakfast or lunch, but it was kindergarten and it was a rough year for me because my daughter was going to kindergarten and my son was a senior in high school. And it was like, 
I was having a empty nest syndrome without having an empty nest. I was just having a heart attack. Like, like this is not okay. Um, I went with bronzer blush and now I'm just doing like the ambient lighting powder all around. So, yeah, I mean, I'm a lot stricter with the little ones than I was with my 20 year old. He definitely got away with a lot that I would never let my kids get, my younger ones get away with. But at the same time, I need a different blush. I was 16 when I had him. So to me, it was a, so to me it was, we learned a lot of things together. We experienced a lot of things in life for the first time together. So I definitely would not say I would do things different because he's my best friend. Like my 20 year old, we can talk about any and everything. I love him to death. Um, and he's my ride or die. So I'm strict with certain things. It's so I said all that to say I'm strict with certain things and we just have to hope we do what we can and teach them right. So Kelly Rettenberger from Keep Beauty Real, she had an assumption that I am the prankster in the family. Now, I think that's definitely a title that I would have to give to my cousin Frankie he's a prankster and he will even look at you dead in the face and tell you some bs joke like he'll say so and so did this or did you hear this and you're like freaking out and you're like what and he's looking at you dead on like with this serious face and you tripping and he in like 30 minutes later he, or 20 minutes who knows he can hold it he's like oh i was just playing really I am a prankster with my 20 year old because like I said, we're BFFs, but like he's, t he's terrified of um, spiders. And I remember one day picking him up from school and no, from his friend's house that he go went to after school. Um, we pulled up to the house and it was dark, but he was always pranking me. And we're getting out the car. I'm going to find the video and post it on my IG. If you're not following me on IG and you want to laugh, then, then go follow me at Emerge Beauty. So he just was, he was a brat. He's a brat. I love him to death, but he's a brat. So he was getting out the car and I was like, oh my God. He's like, what? You got a big old spider? Before I got the word spider out my mouth, this boy took off, he took off all his clothes and I'm like looking through the rearview mirror and he's running down the street, like stripping off all his clothes. Um, so yeah, I could definitely, uh, pull a prank. I tell you that, but I'm not the prankster. That would be, uh, definitely be my cousin Frankie. But when it comes to my 20 year old and my household, yes, that would be, um, that would be the case. But besides that, <laughs> no, like I don't, I don't do it to my mom or my sister, but maybe I don't, just don't do it to the people I know I'll piss off. Maybe. So my next one is Lori. <laughs> Lori from Pretty Sights said that I can throw down if someone muse me enough. I think that was the word she used. I'll pop it up on the screen. But um, 
yeah, I can definitely defend myself. I grew up um, being a tomboy. I played baseball in an all guys league. I'm very into fitness. Um, even though I only, I barely ran three miles today. Don't judge me. I was at like 10 or 11 and now I'm down to three. Like, but it's cold. I don't want to go to the gym and catch the Rona. You know, I'm just blending, blending my little life away. So, yeah, I can throw down if I needed to. And mess with one of my kids and I promise you I'll get the strength of 10 men. And you'll be like, where the heck did that just come from? It'll happen. It's just, but I think that's any mom. You don't even know where you get the strength sometimes. You just, you just say, I wish they would mess with my kids. And you go in. You go in on them. Let me see what else did, um, I know Lori had another one. Lori had, you have an ongoing online shopping cart. Lori's just out here making me spill all the tea. Yes, I do. All the places I love to shop at, I do have an ongoing wish list. If there's something that I absolutely want, then I add it to my cart. And here's a trick for you guys. Like, I love Michael Kors, but I don't wanna pay full price. His stuff always goes on sale. So I'll put it in my cart. If you leave it there, log on to your account, create an account, put your stuff in your cart and leave leave you will get you'll start getting emails asking you to come check out ignore them keep ignoring them and out of nowhere you're gonna get one that is offering you a huge discount if you go check out with a coupon code and i know i can't be the only one that does that but I do do that, but, and I do check my, y'all don't think I'm cray cray, but somebody out there does it too. I check my Sephora wish list daily. And sometimes I'm like, what, what move was I in when I added that to my cart or to my wish list? And then I'll find something I wouldn't typically have on my cart or in my wish list, and I'll remove it. Um, or I think to myself, what YouTuber was I watching when I added that to my card? My wish list. But now that my job has switched to work from home, um, purchasing fashions is definitely uh, gonna slow down, especially considering that I did a lot of shopping from March to May, and we're still in quarantine. Like, I have so many things with the tag still on it. I mean, I wear some stuff, but I love wearing white, and now it's past Labor Day. So, yeah, that will be next spring. In Miami, Labor Day doesn't, if it's past Labor Day, it doesn't matter. But in Georgia, where it actually gets cold, it does. So yes, Lori, I do have an ongoing cart, but only so I can save me some coins. Get your life, don't you judge me. Then we have Sean Cherie, again. Her assumption was, I curse a lot. And if I, I'll pop it up, but if I believe it said, you curse a lot, like a lot, a lot, LOL. And I was like, really? I never gave that inkling. I don't curse on my channel, but I will say 
Yes, I do. However, I am a professional. Like my daytime job, it's, I'm a manager for a department. I'm an operations manager for a department of the mortgage division of a large bank. I can't go around cursing. I don't curse all the time. I know my audience. I know if I can or I can if I'm with friends or whatever, but I don't just do it all the time and it's not going to slip. I know how to act. <laughs> um, if I'm around somebody that just doesn't like it, I'm not going to do it. If I know like they just don't genuine, I genuinely know they don't like it. Um, I know how to act accordingly, but yes, I, I curse. I think a lot of it too is in English and in Spanish. And what's funny is when I get mad, like, I don't know what it feels like to get like steaming mad anymore. Um, Cause after my son got sick and we didn't know if he was gonna make it, like life is too short. I don't get like mad, mad all the, like that anymore. I used to, I don't anymore. But yeah, I mean, I had, I adjust accordingly to my settings. Let's just say, but yes, I can curse a lot. Sean, Shuri, thank you. Oh, oh, I just dropped my mascara wand all over my pants. It's okay. They're jogging pants. So what else do we have? We have Ashley Willard. Ashley Jennifer, Jennifer Ashley Willard. She has a YouTube channel. All these ladies do. And I'll have them all linked down below. She, she said, you are always calm and put together. That was the first part. Now, I'm not always calm. Like, I'll freak out really quick but not to the point that I can't think rationally. But as far as put together, I'm put together as far as my appearance, my kids' appearance, my, my house has to be clean, um, things like that. But everything else, I honestly learned over the years how much I love to procrastinate. I feel like I work better under pressure. So certain things I like to procrastinate, but I am not as calm and chill as I may portray to me, if that makes sense. Um, I will get her done though. If something's got to get done, I'm getting it done. Um, but yeah, I mean, my kids are put together. We look put together. How about that? Even if we're falling apart, we all look put together. Um, but as far as like my house, yeah, like my house clean, things like that. My work at work is always done. Um, I'm a perfectionist um, and when it comes to the house, it's like, I got a little mascara here. I'm like OCD. Um, but one day that hopefully that OCD will go away and I can get a cleaning lady. I use a different mascara for my bottom lash line. But um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. And if it doesn't, she'll call or text me and say, that's not what I meant. So let me know. And then she said, the next one wasn't an assumption. It was a question. Why didn't I start my channel sooner? Um, for a multitude of reasons. One... 
was just being a mom. Being a mom, not wanting to be like publicly out there for their protection. Now I feel like I got a better handle on things. Four of the kids are older. They're out at my house. They're doing their own thing. And the other two, I'm just in a different place in my life. And this mascara though. And then another reason um, was just time. I never had the time. Um, I was very career focused um, on my day job. And as a minority, it's harder. It's sad to say, but it's harder and takes longer to grow your career, move up the ladder than a non-minority. It's just the way it is. It's is what it is at the end of the day so um i was focused on that i was working in the office which if you know atlanta and you know atlanta traffic then i want more bronzer then you know it doesn't matter that i live 22 miles from my office it would take me an hour or more to get there every day um so time and then the biggest one because i've had a love for makeup a long time and my sister my cousins my family they've all always said aileen why aren't you on youtube and then the truth of the matter is every single one of my insecurities are from here up and i was like i just can't i just can't like i'm not pretty enough i'm not this i'm not that and it's just how i felt and then one day I was just like, you know how you, you just grow up and you learn to love you for exactly who you are. And I finally got to that point. And I was like, you know what? Bump that. I love me some me. So I needed that. I needed that in order to feel comfortable sitting here doing this. And it didn't happen till 36 and so be it. Can you use this as a mirror? So yeah, that will be the reasons why I didn't start my channel sooner. But I'm glad I did. I love it. I'm having fun. And I think that's the fact that I think to myself, oh, I want to sit down and film and I love it. It puts a smile on my face. So hope that answers the question kelly from k bella she had a few and i'll pop them up here one is you are not afraid to speak your mind you are absolutely right and uh i think it takes a strong person to be my friend because I'm that friend that it doesn't matter for friends if you're wrong you're wrong and I'm gonna call you out um, but if you're a person that also gets embarrassed easily I'm not that friend uh, if you get embarrassed by what people say or things like that. Like, I'm not crazy off the wall, but if I think it, it usually comes out. I tell my friends I have mouth vomit, but I'm not disrespectful with it. I, I used to not think before I speak. Used to. That's not the case anymore. Um, I am more, I think things through a little more. My friends used to make fun of me and they used to say, lean like, 
you're supposed to be born with a filter and you lose it as you get older. And I said, oh, God's getting me on the filter line because I just wasn't born with one. Um, Cubans say, they have a saying that translated to English says, you, you have no hair on your tongue, which means like you don't have anything filtering what you're about to say before you say it. I heard that my whole life. Um, it just is what it is. Like, again, I'm not rude or disrespectful. I don't, I don't tolerate like seeing somebody being rude or disrespectful to someone else. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up for that the second I see it. Um, but I'm not. Ciao. Yes, I am. If I think it, I'm gonna say it. And it just is what it is. And take it or leave it. And the last one that Kay Bella had was, I always have my friends' backs. Yeah, I do. I, I do. Um, I consider my friends, my closest friends, like, like family. And don't, like any one of us, don't mess with my family. And <laughs> you call me crying and you say so-and-so did what what the first where are you at who am i about to use as a speed bump like what what, what are we gonna do let's plot like we gotta sit down we gotta talk about this we gotta get you to a better place and then where they at because aileen's going to go chat with somebody um but yes i do consider my friends just like family um, once you've been in my house, once you've been around my children, then you can pretty much consider yourself family at that point. It just is what it is. It's our resting place. It's where we lay our heads at night. It's our safe haven. And if you've made it that far, then welcome to the family. That's it, you guys. That's all of them. So I hope you learned a little about me. If you have any other assumptions based off anything that I said, just leave it down in the comments below and I'll address them. Like I'm an open book. I don't have anything to hide. I am who I am, love it or leave it. But I appreciate you guys. Remember, we're all perfectly imperfect. Bye.